What a beautiful day in the city of Los Angeles. Tom LaBonge is smiling upon this beautiful Silver Lake Meadow. I'm Mitch O'Farrell, city council member representing the great 13th district. I want to welcome you to Tom LaBonge land and the 13th district. The beauty is that all of Los Angeles was Tom LaBonge land. And what's really wonderful about assembling today with all of you is that he lives on in everyone's spirit gathered today. He lives on in the plants, in the trees, in the blades of grass, through our hearts, through our minds, because that's how influential Tom LaBonge was. In fact, he's standing to my right in front of all of us. So in honor of the LaBonge family, we have Bridget LaBonge right here. Let's give it up for Bridget LaBonge. The brainchild of this incredible tradition that we are beginning today with the Tom LaBonge Day of Service, the first annual here in the year 2021. It's very fitting that we're beginning a new tradition in Tom's memory. He left us way too early. And as a result, I think the impacts of his life and his contributions to Los Angeles are even more pronounced than they would have otherwise been. And isn't that a nice reminder for all of us to never ever take anything for granted whatsoever. And that's his example as well. Tom used to always talk about, you know, living and leading life with your hands and your heart and your head. And that if you had all three going at the same time, there was nothing you couldn't accomplish. We all have Tom LaBonge stories. I'll bet everyone standing here today who knew Tom LaBonge had a personal experience with Tom because he was everywhere all the time in the most unexpected places. He knew this city like the palm of his hand. He loved this city. And I think that in my mind, when I think of him, I always like to believe that my love for this city could one day match his. He believed in people, he believed in this city, and he knew that we all live these aspirational lives to be the, the best of ourselves. He was so amazing in so many ways, and he understood exactly what public service meant, like nobody else ever. He also understood what it meant to be an elected official. You know, as elected officials, and especially at the local level, whether it's city council or mayor or any other office, we are the main conduit for the public. If we can't have our feet on the ground and in the trenches in our neighborhoods, then you know we're not fulfilling our ultimate duties. And as a council member now for two full terms, I can say that policy-wise, we mostly agree largely, uh, almost unanimously uh, for most of the time. So we have these policy discussions, we hash things out, we hash differences out, it comes to a vote, sometimes it's 15 to two, sometimes it's 10 to five, oftentimes it's 15 to zero. Because the most important thing we do is we respond to our constituents, our residents. We owe it to our residents and our representatives to be there on their behalf without judgment and move things forward. Everything else is noise. The best way to make noise is by serving your community. And that's Tom's example. And uh, I just couldn't be more proud to stand up here with Bridget, Mayor Garcetti, Mr. Mejia from the Department of Water and Power, another department that Tom loved so much, and our Public Works Commissioner, Jessica Galoza, and so many others here today. We have Chief Al Labrada from LAPD. He's, he's uh, in Dodger gear today. Chief Labrada. We have Captain uh, Arturo Sandoval of Northeast Division, also incognito. We have our fantastic senior lead officer, Jesse Ramirez, and he brought the LAPD Northeast Cadets. Welcome to the youth. 
who are following in Tom's footsteps as well. Uh, I understand the LEUSD zoo magnet is part of today's proceedings. Uh, we've got sister cities representation from Guangzhou, China here, I understand. Uh, and I, I got to tell you something. Tom's legacy lives on in my office, not just through me and everyone gathered here today, but literally. I have five team members that came from Tom LaBonge's office. Sylvan De La Cruz is here. Jeannie Men is my chief of staff. I don't know if she's here or not, but maybe she'll be here later. Dan Halden is my communications director. Gigi Galeas keeps me on time and under control. And Mary Rodriguez, the Silver Lake deputy. And Mary is going to be leaving us soon in retirement, but she's not leaving this community. She's, she's still organizing things, and she always will. So I've got to give it up for my five staff members, team members, that came aboard my office from Tom LaBonge's office. That's, that's one of my best legacies. Uh, some other uh, worthy mentions here are... I want to thank the LADWP for their maintenance of the parkway, removing dead trees, palm fronds, dried vegetation, and for raising the tree canopy along the walking path and for providing drinking water for this event. Thank you, LADWP. I want to thank the Recreation of Parks for uh, repairing the irrigation system and providing the mulch for today. I want to thank the Office of Community Beautification and Los Angeles Beautification team for providing the tools and graffiti abatement. Thank you. I want to thank LA Sanitation for providing Tom's favorite trucks of all time, the trash truck. I also want to thank my clean team from the Conservation Corps, the young men and women over there who are preparing all of this so we'll have an easier time volunteering today. Thank you so much. They're out in my district five or six times a week doing large and small projects, about 900 every year in the 13th district. They deserve another round of applause. Thank you, clean team. I want to thank the Silver Lake Reservoir Conservancy. Give it up for them. They've been around for decades, and they really are sort of the north star on everything Silver Lake Reservoir Complex. Thank you so much for always partnering. Uh, and also, Tony Fanara for, for the delicious pizza from Palermo Pizza today. Thank you. We love Palermo. All right, now it gives me a great pleasure and great honor uh, to introduce my friend, Tom Labanja's friend, uh, another conduit through Tom's spirit uh, who really uh, it Im imbues the city in his work. Uh, in uh, with all of the things that Tom believed fundamentally, and that is our mayor, my friend, our friend, Mayor Eric Garcetti. Good morning, everybody, and thank you. Let's give it up for our council member, Mitch O'Farrell. I had the honor of working with him every day for 12 years. Now I get the honor of working with him at least every week for this last eight years, and he's an extraordinary human being as well as representative. Thank you to him and his team. Thank you to all of you for coming here to this very holy space. But I'm just going to keep it real for a minute. I don't want to be here. Or at least I don't want to be here without Tom. I wish we were celebrating with Tom today just another day of service, that he would grab us probably and bring us over to this event saying mayor or citizen or friend you've got to come here because the city needs you and it was a call that he always answered it was a call his family has always answered because you don't do this on your own um, and so Bridget I just want to say I wish I were here with Tom I know you wish you were too but even with my emergency powers in a pandemic, I can't bring him back. So the best we can do is to live in his spirit. Because there's two things we have at the end of our days. Who we knew and what we did. The reason I call this holy ground here for me is in 2001, Tom and I became council members about four months apart from each other. 
was a special election after Council President uh, John Ferraro had died. Tom won in November, and I had been elected and sworn in in July. And we didn't know each other well when I was running for the first time. You know, he met me up in Griffith Park with a, a flat football, and we walked. It was only a half hour late. I almost left, but he came, and we forged the beginning of a friendship. But the most important year, as Mr. O'Farrell will tell you, when it comes to uh, redistricting is the year that ends in one, because it always is after the census and new district lines are drawn, something the council is going through right now in our Citizens Commission. And so Council District 13, which I had won, stretched all the way up to Mitchell Torina back then, because Mike Wu's house is right over there, and so had gone up to uh, the top of the hill. And Tom said, hey, I worked at the Department of Water and Power. They uh, have this lake. What do you want to do with the lake? And the two of us crafted this idea that why don't we cut a line right through the middle of the lake, and then we could have two council members advocating for it instead of one, which I know a lot of communities are like, don't cut up my community. My advice for you as an outgoing mayor is cut it up in as many pieces as possible. You'll get the most attention from as many council members as you can get. And we were able to then go to the DWP and say, hey, we have this idea for this walk path, which we had started half of it. We got the full path around. And then some of you will remember the, the battle about whether we should have this space here, whether it would be respectful to the coyotes that were here, whether it would bring those people into our neighborhood. But we pushed forward, and with a great Department of Water and Power and an extraordinary partner, we were able to bring this meadow uh, here, where I believe Tom LaBonge endorsed you. I know where he endorsed me for mayor, where I used to exercise every morning with my family and workout crew. This is an amazing place. I've always said this kind of embodies LA. It's beauty. I mean, to think that we're in a 19 million person metropolis and that you can find spaces like this, that's completely unique to any big city in the world. And Tom believed in that beauty. He believed in preserving that beauty. And just to riff off of what Councilmember O'Farrell said, we've got too much politics in this world, not enough service. And when people don't serve, sometimes we rely on politics instead of service. But if we all just served, we'd have to have a lot less politics, if you know what I mean. People complain about stuff and think that it's just up to a few people who are their elected representatives to do everything. And we're proud to serve, and we will work as hard as we ever can. But four million people are much more unstoppable than 18 elected officials or even 40,000 city employees. And I want to thank the city employees because Tom LaBonge embodied that. He was an elected official, but he was also a city employee. He went back and forth between those ways of serving. But he also was probably the greatest resident servant I've ever known, too whether it was his neighbor's garbage cans or whether it was picking up trash. Tom would be very proud of all of us today. But he wouldn't want to do this out of pride. He'd want us to realize this is like working out. You've got to keep the muscle of service going to have a healthy city. And so that's what today is all about. So thank you to LAPD and sanitation and DWP and most of all just everyday citizens who could be sleeping in, the young people who got up, the seniors who might have an achy back, but you're here because we love Los Angeles. Martin Luther King said, you know, everybody can do something great because everybody can serve. And I think Tom LaBonge embodied that more than anybody else. So thank you all for, for being here in this sacred space and reconsecrating it with your hands, with your spirit, and with your service today. Um, does anybody need Spanish or you okay? Espanol? Okay. Let me in Espanol. I might have to cheat a little bit. Uh, gracias a todos por venir este día, por este día de servicio, en honor de nuestro amigo Tom LeBonge. Nos hemos reunido el día de hoy para dar tributo a un gran hombre, un concejal muy querido, un gran esposo, padre y amigo. Y estamos aquí para hacer lo que Tom LeBonge dedicó toda su vida, mejorar nuestra ciudad y este vecindario también. Gracias a la familia Labange, a todos los miembros de la ciudad, los departamentos y las organizaciones que ayudarán a organizar este evento, especialmente el concejal Mitch O'Farrell y su, su oficina. Y gracias a todos los voluntarios por estar aquí para rendir tributo al espíritu de Tom. Thank you, and with that, toss it back to our great council member. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Garcetti.
Hey, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge someone here today who is always here every time we do these things across the whole city, and that is Jerry Valido. Jerry, raise your hand. Jerry, thank you so much. He's a, a CD13 constituent. I've known Jerry for over 20 years, and he also embodies the spirit of Tom Abanj in what he does every day while no one's watching. That's integrity, so thank you, Jerry. Uh, next, I'm going to introduce someone from the department that Tom LeBonge was the biggest fan ever of the Department of Water and Power. He believed in all that they do. They bring us water. They bring us power. They sustain our ability to live and prosper in the city of Los Angeles. And Tom spent time working there, so that's part of his legacy. And we have the Director of Water Operations from LADWP, Mr. Nelson Mejia. Good morning. Um, so I find out a couple of days ago that I'm going to do a speech, right? And um, of all days, I get up this morning and I'm, my voice is hoarse. So yeah, that's how uh, the day started for me. So anyways, again, my name is uh, Nelson Mejia. I'm uh, representing LADWP. I manage all the water operations for the metropolitan area. So um, I want to thank Council Member Farrell and his office, the uh, mayor, and uh, the Civil and Human Rights uh, and Equity Department for the city. Uh, this is an, an amazing event. And uh, how fitting, right, that uh, you know, people on a Saturday take their time to clean up the city, which is exactly what uh, um, <clears throat> um, you know, Tom did throughout his life. He lived in this neighborhood his whole, his whole life. So um, I met Tom about 20 years ago, maybe, um, during my younger days, of course. Um, you know, he would come to DWP main office building. He was pretty good friends with Marty Adams, our uh, GM nowadays. And uh, I ran into him in our office, you know. So he looked at me, he said, um, what's your name, young man? He says, uh, I'm Nelson. I said, what do you do here? I'm an engineer. I said, oh, Nelson, you and I are going to get along just fine, he says. So, and uh, since then, you know, we worked on a few projects together. And uh, by the way, all the uh, features, all the improvements to the lake in the last uh, 15, 20 years, um, you know, I'm not telling you something you don't know, but Tom definitely had a say on that. Um, you know, he would come to us, ask for, for certain things, you know, we would say no, but uh, he was so persuasive. He always found a way to get his way and um, you know that's who he was you know so he always took the time to acknowledge people he always took the time to thank you um you know for sometimes uh, you know we're celebrating a birthday in the office he walks in whose birthday is it so and so he goes and hugs the person where's my cake so he, he was so involved in everything i know uh every city department claims that they're the they were tom's favorite department but trust me we know at DWP, we know where he, we know where his uh, heart was. So, I, so not only because he worked there for a couple of years, but I don't think any department did as much for Tom, uh, the, more than DWP. So, you know, something we appreciated uh, a lot is that uh, he championed a lot of uh, the projects that we built here in Los Angeles. In fact, uh, you know, we built the largest uh, underground reservoir for drinking water. That's the uh, Yes, <laughs> that's the Hedward uh, um, complex. And in fact, that uh, we renamed it recently, the Tom LaBange uh, Headworks complex, right? So, so another big project that he helped us with uh, was the Aqueduct Centennial Garden. Uh, and we also changed that to the Tom LaBange Aqueduct Centennial Garden. So. Uh, we uh, we really, really appreciate what he did for us uh, for so many years. Uh, he was uh, our best friend, you know, and um, we we'll always remember him. So he was known as Mr. L.A., right? <laughs> I know he loved the Dodgers. I know he loved the Lakers and the Rams. And the Rams. And the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> And 
There you go. Oh, oh that was so stressful last night. So, yes. Um, so, anyways, don't want to take too much time. I just wanted to to share, you know, that uh, we we miss him. Uh, we appreciate him. Um, there is a plaque here to my left, you know, at the entrance uh, of the reservoir here. You know, the community came together and, you know, in his honor, put a nice little plaque. So if you have a chance and if you haven't seen it, on your way out to your left, you're going to see a nice little rock uh, with the plaque, and, and it's, it's nice. So once again, I want to thank uh, Council Member uh, Farrell, his office, the mayor, and uh, Sewell, and uh, Human Rights uh, and Equity Departments of the city for putting such a nice event together. So, with that in mind, I will go and turn it over back to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Mejia. I want to acknowledge one more time. Uh, there's your mask. I want to acknowledge one more time Jessica Caloza from the Board of Public Works. Thank you, Jessica, for always being here at these important events. You're a real partner, and we appreciate it. Uh, before I introduce Bridget, I want to let you know that a committee was formed to help bring this event forward, made up of Stacy Marble, a friend and another uh, former chief of staff to Tom LeBange, uh, the office of Nuri Martinez and myself. And on, on my team, I've got to thank Gigi Galias, and I've got to thank Dan Halden, and I've got to thank uh, Jeannie Min uh, for being part of that uh, organizing committee because this takes work to organize, but at the heart and soul of all of it is the LaBanche family. And uh, we all love Bridget, and uh, she's here to say a few words about the spirit and intent of this day. Without further ado, our beloved Bridget LaBanche. Hey, everyone. Good morning. I see all my, I see neighbors and friends here. And the difficult thing about these events that we go to is I haven't seen you since, since Tom passed away. So there's a lot of, and that was a difficult time for him to pass because we couldn't hug anybody. And we barely had a crowd to celebrate his life uh, leaving our planet. Um, today, our family is representing Tom. I'm here, our daughter, Mary Catherine is in Ferndale in Griffith Park and our son Charles is in Watts uh, and uh, we'll go on to the other two locations later on. Um, I'm so pleased and honored to see everyone come today and I have to tell you for my family, for my children and I, your presence and your stories and your tweets and your emails and your text to our family with your kooky stories about Tom LaBange are um, what helps uh, keep us afloat on really tough days. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Th thank you. Uh, this is Tom's kind of gig. He loved getting dirty. He loved getting cut up. He'd come home uh, with dirty shoes in the house, stop, throw them outside, wash them off with the hose. Um, <laughs> He loved it, and I'd say, where'd you get cut? And he'd say, look down at his legs. He'd say, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, he, but that was who he was. He had rough hands all his life because he was a worker. And uh, getting dirty and having rough hands and sweating and dirty clothes, that meant he worked hard. He needed to feel the hard work and uh, the, the glory at the end of a day that you did something good. On the day he died, he walked 13,000 steps. He hiked in the morning. He uh, worked in Dante's View in Griffith Park, and then he worked in Ferndale in Griffith Park. Then he came home, and he cut down a tree in our backyard and hauled it up the hillside and left it for the trash. It was trash day. And um, then he went for another walk on the LA River it which had become a, a thing he did during COVID. He took another walk in the afternoon, he walked on the LA River, and then he came home, and that was the end of his day, and the end of his life. Um, so as astonishing as that is, that was a normal day for Tom. It was a Tom LaBange day, was working hard. Um, and so 
my uh, hope for you and his hope for you too today is to find joy in working hard and getting a little dirty, getting your hands dirty, maybe getting wet and sweating a little bit. It's good for the city. It's good to be here today, uh, citywide. And I'm going to really thank Capri Maddox and the uh, Department of Civil and Human Rights. This was really her idea. With me, we thought of it together in honor of his birthday, which was Wednesday. He would have been 68 years old. This is going to be an annual event, and it's going to be bigger next year and with more locations. So in parting, I would love to tell you, please do what Tom LaBonge would do. Stop and pick up a piece of trash, yes. Unclog a storm drain. Say hi to somebody you don't know. Throw a football. Make people uncomfortable, because they won't forget you. <laughs> and his motto is and was, continue to enjoy and love Los Angeles, the great city of angels. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day today. Love you all.